Oh, the drama is high around Footballers HQ today. This guy, this guy's not happy. This guy's very happy. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the ride. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's football time. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's more than that. Oh, it is more than football time. Welcome into a show. Maybe the best show we will ever have. Alternatively, the potential to be the worst and final show we ever have. So this this is going to be a wild ride, Foot Clan. I apologize for the welcome in. It was said through gritted teeth. <laughs> I appreciated your it's football time. I'm loving life over here, guys. There, there is, There's some crap that happened. Jason teased the drama on uh, – look, there, there was a point yesterday, Jason, I told you this right when I came in, and let me let me say this at the top. This is going to be a jam-packed show. We have a ton of matchups we're going to break down. Yep. We have our starts of the week. we got the boom-boom kicker. We've got a lot going on. But yesterday we spent some time talking about what was transpiring in the league? I mean, I put you on the spot on the show mm -hmm. uh, in our league of record to to offer you Saquon Barkley and a couple of second round draft picks. That is the highest capital pick we can offer in our league. And I put you on the spot to trade me Austin Eckler. A lot of people wanted to know what happened. I got a lot of tags. I talked to my co manager for a long yeah, time. Yeah, you were in a you were in a room for a while. We looked at everything, every matchup of every opponent in the league and. As, as far as we could go, and we believe we can win the championship. So we did not wave the white flag. I did not accept the deal. So unfortunately, you tried very hard to get a good deal for you, and it was turned down. <clears throat> but you didn't rest on your laurels. I never do. You never do. I never do. And, and so you declined that trade. And um, what I was getting at was that there was something that transpired yesterday that you teased quickly – for you, for the benefit of the show, on Twitter, and you said there's some drama, and I almost messaged you last night and said, you can't talk about it. Yeah, I know. Like there's a there's a point in which you can talk about something that has impacted you, and then there's a point where you are still dealing with it on a deep level. Yeah. And what happened yesterday in our league was on the Mount Rushmore of the worst things that I have ever experienced as a manager. From an ethics, whatever you want, yeah. integrity. Yeah. I mean, throw out all the important words <clears throat> that people want to have as a human being. So, let me set the the table here for the listeners so they can understand, because this is legit. Like, I don't remember ever seeing you as mad as you were yesterday. This isn't like fake forced drama. This was ready no. to denounce a family member. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it involved Papa Josh, who is my brother-in-law. Yeah. So, here's what happened. Andy never rests on his laurels, does not get my trade. And I knew when I denied that trade that you would just turn around and try to go make yeah, an even better trade for you. It's what you do. So, you go and you try to get Jamar Chase for your team. You use those two second-round draft well, picks. I, I, see, I want to say more. I want to say more. Do. I want to table set better. I, I know, but I, I want it to be clear, and you're very emotional right now. You are trying to make a deal primarily for Jamar Chase, and in so doing, working with Papa Josh, you can't get a deal to go down because he wants a certain thing that you don't have. He doesn't want to break up a stack, yada, yada, yada. He wants a stack. And so you, you and you alone – coordinate a three-team trade between you and Papa Josh and Al Borland that uh, that heals everybody's desires. Never had a three-team trade go through in our league. That, took, that, a, took a considerable amount of thought and time, but the, the, the little extra context I want to add, add is that at the lunch table, the whole conversation began because Papa Josh said, hey, Andy, would you consider Jonathan Taylor? 
and a couple for for Saquon and a couple twos because it was the same offer you had denied. Mm -hmm. I said, nah, he's on a buy. Otherwise, I would probably consider that. Um, I said, what about Jamar Chase? Josh goes to his desk. You know, I could probably survive that. Let me go talk to my co-manager. So that was the beginning okay, of it. Okay. And he came back to me and said, you know what? I just can't do it because I don't want to lose my stack. I have the Burrow Chase stack. If I didn't have that stack, I would probably do it. Okay. Sorry. I and know that's probably not so as necessary, you, but so that you, it was in my heart. You go and you find a way to get Josh a new stack. Yes, with Justin Fields and DJ Moore. Yep, uh, multiple second round picks being involved. Amari I, Cooper, Al Borland is a third party to it. He he's providing the stack. Mm -hmm. He gets more. I knew I knew Al's been trying to trade DJ Moore for a long time. Mm -hmm. I said, look, I can get you more than DJ Moore. I can get you Joe Burrow and DJ Moore. Yeah. I'm going to solve a problem for you. It was a great deal for Jeremy. In fact, both Jeremy and Josh thought you came up with a brilliant plan because they weren't looking at this. They had no plans of making this trade, but they found a way. Well, you found a way for their teams to be better. Yes, and, and, and we talked about it for an hour. We're keeping it very secret. In uh, fact, I want to add this nuance in there. Al offered the deal, and I clicked accept. So uh -huh. we had two-thirds of a party. Two-thirds were and done. And we just had Papa Josh, my Sorry. brother, former. Former brother-in-law. My brother, who's just said, I just need to wait for my co-manager, uh -huh. and then uh -huh. we might be there. And then the trade went through. The trade goes through the platform. Sleeper alert. Trade has been accepted. I'm sure you were excited. And Thrilled. Then, and then you saw the trade, and it was the same trade you came up with. Without you, you're cut out of it. You don't get Jamar Chase. You don't send the two twos to Papa Josh. But Papa Josh and Jeremy, they, they liked what you came up with in the other players in the deal, and so they took your deal without you carving you out, and you were not happy. You are ah! not happy. It was so uncomfortable and entertaining at the same time, and now these two gentlemen uh, over here in Deucer's Alley, let's show these two shameful gentlemen in Deucer's Alley. I, Josh hasn't looked at me. <laughs> he can't look up at all. When I got home last <laughs> night, my wife had a text from him saying, like, give him a hug because something, like, I did a bad thing. <laughs> oh, so so here's the truth. And, and you're not going to like... <laughs> no, 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 no. Bull <laughs> crap. I didn't even get to say anything else okay, okay. after you concluded that. I have been very vocal from the moment it happened. It is fine to decline my trade. What happened was neither person... And I hold Al very responsible. Because Al could have accomplished the deal later in the day with integrity. But he chose to put the blame on Papa Josh and just accept the deal. No one told me. Nobody rejected the offer. Everybody said, we're about to do it. And then they secretly back-channeled this trade that I built with no disclosure of saying, hey, I don't want to do it. So I was incensed. There's only one thing that's happened to me in this league that was worse. It was by <laughs> yeah. Mike a long time ago. But this was, this was true bad form, in my opinion. Yeah, Bush League bad form. And the way that I see it is the process is certainly wrong. But also, I understand the outcome. The outcome makes sense. It, oh, it yeah. was a trade that made totally sense for fine both with them, that. And Josh didn't want to give up Jamar Chase. So no, he didn't like, want to give him up to me. But sure, he didn't yeah. want to trade you, yeah, Jamar yeah. Chase. Yeah, exactly. And in the end, I'm like, okay, that's fair game. Totally. The only thing that was really upsetting about it is that they didn't come to you and say, hey, we're I, not in on this. We're not in on yep. this, but we're going to take. They should have just been men of honor and said, yes. hey, yes. we're going to do this deal without you. I am sorry. I yeah. don't want to give you Jamar Chase. Instead, they pushed it through, carved you out. What is the opposite of a man of honor? Uh, that would be a man of a man of dishonor. That would be Papa Josh. That would be a man of dishonor. So I put the blame 80-20 uh, on Papa Josh. It is It is 80-20 on Papa Josh because, I, I you know, Jeremy was the third party here just accepting whatever trade came his way. He wasn't oh, the yeah. negotiator. Mm. Mm. He did send it. He, yeah. did put, he sent the new one through, so he, he was... I didn't send it. No, no, no. Yes, he, you he, did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You sent it back through. Don't you lie. 
Wait, you're you talking s- about the deal that Josh and I did? Oh, no, not that. No, he said oh, no. your trade I, through. I, yeah, because I had countered. They decided that. Can the you count- cut his mic? No, that, <laughs> I control the mics. <laughs> they decided that the counter was no good, so I sent it back through with the original trade that I was willing to do. I, I clicked accept on both trades. He thinks that absolves him. <laughs> you're you're sitting here saying him. that I should have said it I don't not, want to do the uh, deal. I no, did want to no. do the deal. You I wanted have had, the deal. Josh didn't want the deal. If you're part of the deal, you you be a man of honor. And so Foot Clan, I, yeah, remind, anyways. I remind everybody what I said yesterday. All the ups, all the downs, all the crazy, all the good and the bad. It's what makes fantasy football so doggone fun. The fact Is that, that the we word? have yes. The fact that we have these emotions, that we have these frustrations, these because you're not going to rest on your laurels now. You're probably going to go make an even better trade for you. I, I'm not worried about you. I mean, I'm worried about you as like a competitor and, and his and, mental and, health. and maybe your mental health. Yeah, for sure. But this is fun, and we are all having so much fun. <laughs> Be honorable, Foot Clan. Be honorable. That's all I'm going to ask. And now football. And you know what's funny is I you don't know this. I had three other managers from other teams in the league that found out what, what happened, and they all messaged me separately. And they said they were so sorry for what happened and Aww. that this league shouldn't be like that. That's so sweet. And I was like, that made me feel good because everybody knows that Josh sucks. <laughs> all right, moving on. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Practice updates that matter. Damian Pierce didn't practice again on Wednesday. So we are full steam ahead with Devin Singletary. The matchup is great. He was awesome last week. You know he's going to have, you know, 90% of the workload. Looks pretty, pretty nice so far. The uh, roulette situation in Houston with their wideouts in a good matchup against Arizona continues. Robert Woods, Noah Brown didn't practice. Okay. Nico's back. Nico Collins back at practice. Robert Woods, I'm not worried about at all. Uh, this is a veteran day of rest. He's been dealing with his injury. He came back, played uh, a little more than half the snaps, and this is an expected day of rest. Noah Brown, I don't think, has been getting Wednesdays off, so it is a little bit interesting. Um, this, to me, when I see Nico Collins, Robert Woods, Noah Brown, all three of these guys kind of on and off the roulette uh, wheel of injuries, that says Tank Dell. That says Tank Dell is the healthy one in the same great matchup that I really want in my lineups. Justin Fields will start on Sunday. The injury was a thumb. He's been working on grip strength, getting back out there. It means a bump up for DJ Moore. It mean if Justin Fields is healthy, I will uh, say it is the Lions. That is a uh, potentially a challenging matchup. Justin Fields under pressure has not been exceptional. Yeah, they're they're not uh, they're they're great run defense and. Uh, an average uh, secondary. The the timeline that they took with Justin Fields does give me confidence. They said from the moment it happened, they are not going to put him back out on the field until he is ready and he is accurate and he's playing the same as he did before. And the fact that they took an entire month off without putting him on IR says to me I believe he is ready. So it is a little dicey to say week one back with Justin Fields, who was, you know, both hot and cold before the injury hard to be very confident in him but I do think you can play him this week okay well I mean the quarterback options right now in fantasy we we spent too much time on you know we're talking about Joshua Dobbs we're talking about Sam Howell we're talking about you know some of those kind of options you didn't think were locked in Fields was very good for a handful of games Vikings updates Justin Jefferson still limited hamstring gut thoughts right now I think he plays this week. My gut is that he doesn't. Well, one of our guts will be wrong. Yes, yes. K.J. Osborne returned to practice. Alexander Madison, concussion, did not practice. Uh, unlikely that Madison will be available. And Jason, our Arizona Cardinals have signed Michael Carter. Which is great news because it just means he went claimed and he cannot be signed onto the practice squad of the Jets. Uh, Brees Hall, please involve yourself in the passing game. I don't think a lot of practice squad players play on Sunday. No, but they can be called back yeah. up really easily. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's get into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. I forecast a job opening. That's what I forecast. Just just one? Just, just one. Well, we... Yeah, just one. Oh, that's nice. Hey, Al, you get to keep your job. Fantastic. That's good uh, news. Papa Josh, see yourself out. 
Yeah. Um, all right. Colts, Falcons, Patriots, Saints. Yeah, we are going to get some messages about that job opening, so we may have to really consider it. <laughs> uh, Colts, Falcons, Patriots, Saints on by. I'm really sad about the Falcons <laughs> being on by. B. John Robinson, I don't, I don't think we talked about it enough on Monday's episode, but it really seemed like Arthur, minus the mustache, I mean, B. John Robinson played 75% of the snaps, had 22 carries, had inside the five opportunities where he scored a touchdown, uh, ran a ton of routes. Like He had full utilization in this game in a way that he really hasn't had this season, and so I was excited to play him again this week, and he's unfortunately on by. Yeah, I'm mostly optimistic there. However, they did lose with that plan. They, they lost with it, and they played Arizona, and Arizona is a bit of a uh, – friendly to the efficiency of the running back, but it was a good sign. Yeah, nine carries versus 22 carries Algier to Bijan. You, that's just so important. That's what that's what it needs to be. The Pittsburgh Steelers at 6-3 and three take on the 6-3 and three Cleveland Browns. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cleveland minus one. The over-under is... <laughs> Hold your breath, foot clamp. 33. 33. I believe, I heard somewhere that this is the second lowest line in a decade. Um, yep. It opened at 38 Sounds and a half. Right. We got the news about Deshaun Watson that dumped the line down to 33 points. That makes it a 17-16 game by the books, and that's not a lot of points. That and is not a lot of points. There's not a lot of, like, like they lowered the ceiling at this stadium, in my opinion. Very low. Yeah, there, there so, are no more nosebleed sections because those are now – outside of the roof yeah i mean this is uh like the players involved there's a lot of names Najee, jalen warren deontay johnson jerome ford kareem hunt amari cooper you got george pickens in the mix you got david njoku that's a lot of names players that have been started frequently mm -hmm. you uh, also have a browns defense that is the best in football you, you you've got them at home where their defense is going to be very effective, I think, against Kenny Pickett and company. Like, this is not a good matchup for the Pittsburgh Steelers. No, we and I, I will say, though... And the Browns that are the, still favored. The last time that we saw Dorian Tom, Thompson-Robinson play, the Cleveland Browns' great defense was very bad. And the reason they were bad is because they kept finding themselves in short field positions due to turnovers from DTR. Um that I, don't, I mean, it doesn't make a huge difference here. I think you're still going to be weary of most players in this game. On the Cleveland Browns side, led by DTR, um, I you know David Njoku's been in a lot of lineups. I'm not playing him. The only player in the passing game that I will consider is Amari Cooper, and I'm not excited to play Amari. Are Cooper. you fine? Are you actively just trying to find anybody else to play? Like, would you play uh, DeAndre Hopkins? I would play DeAndre Hopkins. Would you play George Pickens against Cleveland? Uh, no, I would play Deontay Johnson against Cleveland, though. Even though the, the uh, Browns are very good against all positions, the way that they play defense is kind of how uh, Deontay Johnson exploits matchups. So I, I'm still Deontay Johnson over George Pickens. But, but over Cooper, I'm saying. Yeah, I would go Deontay Johnson, Amari Cooper, then George Pickens. Deontay did not practice. He has a thumb injury. So oh, that that on. is something to pay attention to, and that it could was have, a Wednesday. Yeah, I I don't I don't want to pay, play Deontay. I'd be on the other side of that coin there. I don't. This Cleveland defense has been very formidable. That that game you talked about, it was twenty eight to three. Baltimore beat Cleveland. DTR had three interceptions, and I think he had a fumble. Some defensive scores. I am nervous. And and Jalen Warren last week, Jason, we talked about this yesterday in the studio after the show. Jalen Warren got the. Uh, he got the introduction for the team as the starter. And I've heard some people talking about how Mike Tomlin has now named Jalen Warren, the starter. That's not true. That's, That's not, not true. That is not the truth. If you look at what uh, Mike Tomlin said is this was just an honor before the game. So that in the introductions at home, they could, he, he said he wanted to reward Jalen Warren's play with that honor of being introduced as the starter for the game. Like he gets to run out as the, you know, as, as the starter, be announced and that's a really cool honor he says he does this all the time for different players sub package defensive guys he'll name as a starter for a home game uh you know Jalen Warren's involved but he is not he is not the starter of this that that got overblown from a headline 
not listening to what Mike Tomlin was actually saying. Yeah, and last week they split snaps exactly. Najee Harris, I think, had the first five carries. It's a pure 50-50 split against the number four ranked defense. The Browns give up 14 points on the ground. Oh, so split it in half. Seven points. No, thank you. I bench both. Jerome Ford is in play to me because I think they're going to be very run-centric, and if they if they do what you just said, if they flip the field on Kenny Pickett, Jerome Ford is going to get the majority of the work, and the Steelers are only middle of the pack against that. I would again, when I said lower than the ceiling, I meant every player on this in this game is not going to give you a week winning performance. Correct. The next game is the Bears and the Lions. Oh, by the way, are you are you interested in uh, Friar Muth on return, or are you just watching? Like as in starting him? Not in, correct. No, I'm not going to start him against the Browns. The Browns are. Uh, number one on the season against tight ends, so no thank you. I only bring it up because a lot of fab has been spent on him recently. The Bears, 3-7. and seven, The Lions are 7-2. and two, The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit, minus 7.5. The over-under is 48. And uh, they were even more favored before the field's expectation for him to start. Yeah, started as a double-digit uh, favorite for the Lions with Fields announces the starter. Now it's at 7.5. And I think this is really good. Fields being active in this game is just good for all parties. Um, kind of the opposite of what happened with Sean Watson in the previous matchup. And, oh, we get revenge game narrative. David Montgomery. Yeah, there, the there, could, Bears. there could be some more opportunity given there. The Bears defense, we need to remember it's been much better against the run in recent history. Uh, you can't look at the whole year where they're terrible. But over the last, like, literally, oh, on the year, schedule adjusted, they're 26th. Yeah, they're terrible. They're one of the worst. Over the last six weeks, they're fourth. They've been giving up 13.6 fantasy points per game. It's something to keep in mind. It's not going to impact what your decision is this week, though. And it has been against quality running backs. It hasn't just been Josh a schedule Jacobs and, of yeah. scrubs. They've, they've really limited people on the ground. Uh, they do uh, give it up a little bit more through the air. So in this matchup, even though there is the revenge narrative of David Montgomery, I am Jameer Gibbs over David Montgomery in this matchup. Interesting. I, uh, I, th I think his utilization, the fact that he had multiple uh, goal line opportunities last week and he catches the ball, he's more and more involved. I, I love both players. I'm starting both guys, but if I had to pick one, I'm Did going you, Jameer Gibbs. I, I, I haven't validated it but I had seen it sourced a couple of times or, or mentioned a couple of times that they actually called Montgomery in for that goal line and that Montgomery waved it off to give it to Gibbs. Oh, really? Because Gibbs had the big run to get down there. No, that is I, that is that is boo -doo -doo, boo -doo -doo, breaking so news. So I, I think that that is a very real possibility that that's what transpired. Wow. And um, obviously Gibbs succeeding for three consecutive weeks you're going to expect the team to give him more opportunity. This is the Lions at home. Goff is is uh, a must play. Gibbs and Montgomery aren't leaving your lineup. Amon Ross St. Brown is a top five receiver, in my opinion, right now. For sure. And then Sam Laporta is, of course, going to be started in this game. Jason threw out the uh, interesting thought process that Jamison Williams may have more opportunity in this offense, and you said it on the basis of the fact that he – he laid a big block. He was participating in more and more. And then we got a quote after the game. Yeah, so Dan Campbell on Jamison Williams, he said, quote, he feels like he's one of the guys now. Uh, the more that he earns his stripes here, the more opportunities he gets. He's in a good place right now. He's improving. These quotes matter because these are not the quotes that have been coming out on Jamison Williams. Um, yeah, I think it was before we were recording yesterday. I, I, I said, like, I think Jamison Williams is going to break out soon. Uh, I'm, I'm in on him now. Because what he did when he ran down the field and opened up that uh, that opportunity for David Montgomery to score the 75-yard rushing yard, that was Lions football. That is not what he's been doing. And and they literally said, you, you, you don't block, you don't get the rock. That's what they have told Jamison Williams. So he goes downfield and he blocks. They're going to try to get him the ball. On the other side, the matchup, Justin Fields, you said you'd play him. Here's where the running backs stand in Chicago right now. Khalil Herbert, still on IR technically, was limited in Wednesday's practice. We thought we'd get him back last week. We didn't. So I don't know if that means things just didn't feel right. But so far, we don't know if he's going to be out there. Now, Deonta Foreman is also limited. 
with an ankle injury. Roshan is just a complimentary back. His role's not changing. None of none of this matters. None of this just matters. Just don't play him. If if Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson are both gone, I'm not playing Deontay Foreman. Uh, this is a game that doesn't project well. The Lions have a great ground defense against the run, and and, and this will be a timeshare, so I'm not interested in these players. Give me your season finishing viewpoint on DJ Moore. DJ Moore had a 45-point explosion against Washington in week five and a big week the week before. Mm -hmm. Those are two Justin Fields games. Now he had a Justin Fields game in week six. That was 7.6 fantasy points. And then the last four weeks he's been held in check because Tyler or uh, Tyson Bajant has been the quarterback. So do you view DJ Moore as a what rest of season? I view him as a top 15 wide receiver rest of season. Uh, that week six where he only put up seven and a half fantasy points, he uh, Justin Fields only played 53% of the snaps. He he wasn't – he he didn't – he played half a game. So I'm not worried about that for DJ Moore. They were on a heater together. Um, DJ Moore is a, is a solid, solid option this week. All right. Uh, any other players from this matchup you want to throw out there? Cole Komet has been on a tear. Obviously, it's been with uh, uh, Taysom – I can't remember his first name because he's Bilbo. <laughs> That's we not... have called him Bilbo for quite a while, <laughs> or Secret Bajent Man. Yeah, so uh, Bilbo Bajent uh, no, has he... loved himself some Cole Komet, but you know th what Cole has done is he's shown that he's he's a dude out there, and so I think you can still start Cole Komet in this. That's matchup. with a capital D. Right, right, right. That was actually all caps. It's Tyson. Say it with me now, Tyson. Bilbo. Okay, that's what it sounded like. Uh, quick break. Back with Chargers Packers. I still can't look at Josh. <laughs> well, to be fair, prior to this incident, very hard to look at Josh. That's fair. That is like, fair. It's just Thank not you. a fun time. Every time that you say something that's even remotely on my side, I feel good. <laughs> good. Uh, Los Angeles, they're four and five. The Packers are three and six. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Chargers minus three. The over under is 44. Neither of these teams currently play off bound. Justin Herbert has been on fire. For a fantasy, for from a fantasy perspective, he's been very good. He's the quarterback four on the season. He's got top twelve performances in seven of nine weeks. And you know, the Packers at Lambeau, mm -hmm. not the best matchup for the quarterback position. I wouldn't expect top five this week from Herbert. But I also wouldn't expect anyone to bench him. Yeah, small chance of rain uh, on the road in Lambeau here. Cold weather game. It, it doesn't. It doesn't make itself look like a pass heavy game, especially when you look at the Packers being a run funnel defense. They've really shut down quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, but they are just gashable on the ground. So Eckler, ob obviously, Austin Eckler looks like he's a, a you know a great play this week. You know, I don't overblow that because Austin Eckler, he doesn't just have good performances against bad defenses or or doesn't show up against good defenses. So I'm not like over the moon for Eckler this week versus most weeks. He's just always going to be a top five guy. Can I say something briefly about our show yesterday, the playoff primer? And, and I saw a lot of people respond to that show. I think it was well received. I think people went out and they made moves. I saw people sharing their trades for Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. I saw people sharing their trades for Austin Eckler. Mm -hmm. um, it was an excellent show, you're right. It was an awesome, excellent show. Yeah. I want to uh, just comment briefly on the fact that, just a reminder, like you're not in the playoffs right now. Like I do want to remind people there are four weeks left. Yeah. So if you are fighting to get into the playoffs, there there are some trades that you could make that would be putting the cart before the horse and I just want people to be careful I know you're at the deadline so if you're secure that's what that that was that was to let you know what the future holds for a lot of players at the position but you know you got to get there and you got four weeks to do it and there there are some players that have great playoff schedules that don't have the best schedule for the next four weeks and so you need to contextualize that you don't need to do everything you can no matter what and then not end up there if I don't end up in the playoffs, I'm going to be so mad I didn't take your deal. Well, that – yeah, look, you told me that yesterday. You said you guys talked for, I think it was three, four hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you came out of your little trading vestibule, and uh, 
I didn't know which way you were going to go. And you kind of said, look, I know this is unrealistic because you'll have traded your picks by then. But if Sunday comes around, because our deadline, it, it's basically when the games end on Monday. Right. You said if Sunday comes around and we've lost, we're probably going to come back to you. Yeah, I'll take that deal if you still got the picks. Yeah, which, I mean, we'll see. I definitely don't have nine trade offers out right now. <laughs> so, uh, Eckler, of course, you play him. The Herbert question, I mean, I guess people could have Kyler. Kyler against Houston or Herbert on the road against the Packers. I would, I, I would play Kyler. I lean that direction, too. And then Hal against the Giants. I probably stay with Big Herbs there based on his performances just because Hal has been unpredictably weird at times. I've got Hal one spot behind uh, Justin Herbert. I don't want to mess around with Chargers tight ends at all. No, no, I'm no. throwing that out there. Um, I don't really want to mess around with non-Keenan Allen wide receivers. Uh, Jalen Guyton, and Quentin Johnson, could either of them have a good game this week? Of course. Yeah, sure thing. Could neither of them? Oh, Pro yeah. Probably. Yeah. What on earth do we do with Packers? I mean, there, there's a world where there's a world where you don't want to play any of them. Yeah, I mean, you can throw on the Chargers pretty easily. Um, so it, it it's a tempting matchup at home in a game that you're not a huge underdog in. The question is just it's it's hard to know who to start between Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed. And because of that, I think in redraft leagues, you don't start any of them. In, I agree with that. And Watson's banged up again. Yeah. In in DraftKings, you know, that that's where you can take a shot on someone. Like, I know Jaden Reed is yeah, 4,000. Yeah. And so he's just a really good value on a good matchup when he doesn't cost a lot. Yep. If you're factoring in the value of players, not just start sit decisions in your in your home leagues, then then you could play with them. But otherwise, I'm I'm pretty much out on all Packers. Minus Aaron, Aaron Jones. Yeah. Minus Aaron Jones, yes. Yeah, that would be the one. Hey, did you hear the big rumor? I didn't. The Belichick rumor? Oh, the the uh, the Manders want to trade for Belichick? That's no, what I've heard. No, no, no. I heard uh, he's leaving after the year. He's going to be the head coach and general manager of another franchise. And there's some rumors that that's already decided where he's going. And, and that's not the Manders? And I've heard this with the Manders. That's the Los Angeles Chargers interesting yeah and that he'll take over the defense he'll let herbert be herbert he wants to go i mean like to me there's no chance he's going to the to the manders none why be unless he has a a very unless he has a big belief in sam howell uh, sam howell and justin herbert that is a massive differential on the future of what you expect the player to be. So I would be, if I'm him, I'd much rather go to a place where Justin Herbert is. Yeah, I mean, obviously you'd rather have Herbert than Howell, um, but he's under contract, so this would be a trade situation, and whatever the pack, whatever the well, Patriots... Well, they could... The Patriots... Would I'm not, sure they will consider his wishes, but... Yeah, that's all I'm saying. So um, it's one of those things where it'll be very interesting to see. I think we're done with this game. All right, we're going to move on. We've got the Las Vegas Raiders at 5-5 five and five, taking on the 6-3 and three Miami Dolphins. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Miami minus 13.5. The over-under is 46.5. Goodness gracious. Miami opened at minus 10, and it's been bet to minus 13.5? Mm, yeah. Who would you take at 13.5? Uh, that line becomes interesting, but I would take the Raider or I'm sorry I would take I would take the Dolphins what we have seen with I mean I guess the question is are the Raiders good because they're five and five and they're at least playing with new life um you know the the Antonio Pierce coming in as head coach and rallying the troops and they're they're coming off of two wins maybe the Raiders are a legitimate team over the course of the season the Raiders have looked really bad they have a uh, a low drafted rookie at quarterback right now they they they're they're not a scary team. And what we've seen with the Dolphins this year is they can't get over the hump against good teams, and they absolutely destroy and annihilate the souls of everyone else. So at home for Miami against a team that I don't believe is really actually good in the Raiders, I think they're going to roll. What will be interesting is the Raiders clearly have made a decision that they're going to give the rock to Josh Jacobs as much as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. What do they do when they're down 24-3? to three? They're going to give Josh Jacobs the rock as much as humanly possible. See, That's I think we'll finally get to see what Aiden O'Connell can do. 
They're going to have to try to throw the ball to get back into this game. Do you think you want to see that? I'm not saying I, 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 I think people want to know what's, what the potential Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers is in the offense. And like the one thing about Miami, I know they got their corners back, but when you're playing a prevent type of defense at some point in this game, if you're against, you know, a huge deficit, I mean, the, the game projects to be 13 and a half point differential. I'm just excited to have a game that they can't, like you can't get back into this game just handing it to Josh Jacobs. That's not going to be a real realistic thing. I, I agree. And over the last six weeks, the Dolphins have really shut down the run. They're top three over the last six weeks in total fantasy points to running backs. So it doesn't project to be a great matchup for Jacobs. And the implied team total for the Dolphins is 30 points. That is a, that's a, a number where you want to get as many players in the game as possible. And there are a lot. You could start Mostert. You could start Tyreek, obviously. Jalen Waddle, obviously. Uh, there's going to be a ton of questions. I'm telling you right now, I'm starting Devon Achan. Um, you, you, you don't want to miss out. You're not waiting out. for more information. I am not waiting for more information. I don't want to miss out on what he can do in a matchup like this against the Raiders who can get gashed on the ground and have a 30-point performance on my bench. Maybe he goes out and puts up five, five points. I mean, obviously, if he's active, he has not technically been activated yet, but the expectation is that I, I think they said he could have pretty much played with a with like a, a a knee sleeve, they took a very measured approach here, and I think Devon Achan's wheels up. Yeah, I mean the truth is Devon Achan. I probably take a different view than you in the sense that he's going to have limited opportunities. They're not, you know, this is not going to be. I think you're talking eight. I don't mind that. Give me eight to Devon Achan. Well, yeah, runs but if he, you know, if he's hesitant, or anything like that, I think it's risky. I wouldn't start him in any circumstance. I start Devin Singletary over him every day of the week this uh, week against Arizona. Devin Singletary, assuming that Damian Pierce isn't there, projects to be a great start. I don't have any problem if that's if you want to take the safer approach. I think Singletary is safer. His floor is higher than what Devon Achan first week back off of injury is. I will still start Devon Achan there. You're a wild no, man. No risk it, no biscuit. You're a wild man. I I want those points. Man. Tyreek Hill, you play him. Jalen Waddle, of course, and. Um, you know, the Raiders, it's going to be Jacobs, it's going to be Adams. And then stop. stop. And then that. stop talking. The last three games stop for Jacoby talking. Myers, one reception, two receptions, two receptions. Yeah, and they did make, I mean, like, I know Adams last week, it was a better game. Like, Adams had, the, the, the number that made me happy. You know how many targets he had against the Jets defense? No. 13. It's a good number. He had 13 targets against the Jets. Um he had a good a good game against the Jets for a team that scored 16 points. He was six for 86. Uh, some signs of life there, I think. Yeah, I mean, Devontae Adams is Devontae Adams. You you start him. 31 percent of the targets in the three uh, Aiden O'Connell starts. A Chan or Mixon against Baltimore. Uh, a Chan. Wow. Henry against Jacksonville or A Chan. A Chan. Okay. Barry Sanders <laughs> against the Steelers. Uh, I'll take Barry Sanders. Okay. He went Barry there. I wouldn't surprise. Uh, New York, the Giants, 2-8. and eight. Devon? Take. Yeah, the, go ahead. I, I don't want to say where he is. But you do know that Devon Achan is like not going to do that his whole career, right? I obviously okay. know that he right. cannot possibly score on average 30 points. But see, that's not what your tattoo says. The, right. Um, Devon Achan right now is my running back four on the week, so... I, no risk it, no biscuit. <laughs> I'm not benching him. All right. Uh, the so so who who would you play? You, you haven't said a name over him. Uh, Christian we McCaffrey. Got, we got to find the line. Austin Eckler, Jameer Gibbs. Those three are. Oh, I guess if he's at four, that's the three above him, right? <laughs> that is it. So you would play him over Montgomery. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I, <laughs> that, I, that's the message. <laughs> so bench your ETNs. Play your A chance. Man, I you know I don't know what I want to happen. I actually I do because I think I'm facing HN. so I want him to fall on his face and you look stupid. But okay, fair. but that's for my for me, not because I want you to. I feel will bad. I will take the lumps because I recognize the risk. You you have a chance well, of him going out and getting one carry. Now you used to have him, didn't you? You shut you, you shut your evil mouth. Yes, I did, and he got injured, and I had to make moves. Oh uh, yeah, to get wins. Yeah, yeah. And I went and I got David Montgomery, Woo! who then got injured. Anyways, yeah. all right. That's uh, there fantasy's you go. stupid. It's not fun at all. Yeah, that's what we we're we're pointing out here. Giants two and eight. The Commanders four and six. The Giants with a fourteen point implied point total. DraftKings Sportsbook has Washington as nine point home favorites. The over under is thirty seven. I mean, 
you know, the the Giants are the Giants are a giant mess. I mean, there's no team I would I, I don't want to cast my eyes upon thy television set. No, you you uh this should be tape delayed for sure. Um you brought they up at tape lunch. delay it and skip the Giants offensive possessions. Oh, that'd be awesome. I would watch the Manders game if yeah. I didn't have to watch the Giants game. The Manders game. <laughs> Just the Manders on offense. Um you you brought this up um because for some reason I I didn't even remember but uh, Tyrod Taylor's coming back. He, he will be eligible to return off of IR here uh, shortly, maybe next week. I don't remember the exact timeline. In the meantime, so things could get better for Wandale, for Saquon. Um, I know we worried a lot about the playoff schedule for Saquon. It's, it's as bad as it gets, and this Giants team is as bad as, genuinely as bad as I've ever seen any NFL team. Um, but this is the Danny DeVito-led Giants and that won't be how they finish the season it should be the Tyrod Taylor led Giants who are far more capable Danny DeVito shouldn't be in the NFL he's a penguin that I mean that's I guess factually true yeah I'm just speaking facts um the the Washington defensive matchup for running backs is really good so this could be your last hurrah with Saquon now he's it has been reported and I I saw the game he did tweak his ankle a little bit in that game, came back out on the field, got a billion more carries, but something to monitor. He was limited on Wednesday. Uh, no sign that he won't be out there, but, I mean, if he wasn't out there, you could drop the Giants to about a zero implied point total. Right, and and assuming he is out there, you're going to start him. Uh, you know, he's getting 24 opportunities a game. Even if they're inefficient, that will add up to fantasy points. On the other side... Yeah, I'm not touching anybody else, though. No Wandale, no Slayton, no Hyatt, no, no one else. No... Thank you. Uh, but for the for the Washington Manders, you've got Sam Howell, who's been on a tear. Um, you saw Dak destroy the Giants last week, and they just kept throwing. I I worry that this is like a trap for the receiving game for the Manders, and that they'll get to more running if they're up by you know ten points. I do agree with you on that. I mean it it uh, like it's we, possible, and we've seen them ignore. Like Sam Howell's having monster fantasy games where, I mean, last week Terry McLaurin was not a good play, and Jahan Dotson was a goose, and Sam Howell was a monster. So Sam Howell's averaging 40 passing attempts per game. He's been a top-10 quarterback in five of the last six weeks. It's hard to go away from him here, and I don't think you need to go no, away from him. But you play him. There, There is the potential here that they run the ball more than expected. Brian Robinson is a great play. I know you're going to talk about him later. Um, he should be involved on the ground a lot they haven't been running a ton but they have been throwing the ball to the running backs Dallas six and three taking on the one and eight at Carolina Panthers the DraftKings Sportsbook line Dallas minus ten and a half the over under is 42 points who would if the Panthers and the Giants were playing the Danny DeVito Giants if the Panthers and the Penguin Giants were playing who on a neutral field Panthers who, win yeah for sure yeah, I, I don't know if you saw, I'm, I'm sure you did, but Frank Reich is taking the play-calling duties back. <laughs> yeah. You know that they scored two offensive touchdowns and 30 drives once he handed them away? So this could mean good things for Adam Thielen, and they were a mu they were a better offense when he was calling plays. We just didn't have the context of how bad it could get. Yeah, yeah, we thought, oh, they're not very good, and so let's make a change, and they're like, oh, we were super good. Right. Let's go back. So the Panthers, 10 point home underdogs 10 and a half point home underdogs you know Dallas has been on a an absolute heater I mean they are putting up so many points I don't know if you saw this last week the reason CeeDee Lamb stayed in that game is they were trying to break the record for did 10 that. catches on 150 yards once they did that they pulled him is there a chance they want to extend that record my fantasy team hopes so <laughs> a lot of people asked how did I acquire CeeDee Lamb this week our league is a keeper league. Right. It's very different. So in a redraft, I think he would be nearly impossible to acquire San unless you – I mean, I had people asking me, would you rather – would you trade Tyreek Hill for CeeDee Lamb right now in a redraft? Because we went over the fact that Tyreek Hill has a terrible playoff schedule, but he's Tyreek Hill. And CeeDee Lamb has the best. And they've been both very good. Like, what would you do? Yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a cool question people are You'd asking. you probably stay with what you got. I would stay with Tyreek. But the Cowboys, here's Tony Pollard. He can't get it done anywhere. 
against anybody. And then the Panthers are like, here we are. Like, we're 32nd in the league over the last six weeks against running backs. We're 31st on the year. We'd love to give you points, Tony. No one has been more anti-Tony Pollard than I have over the last couple of months, but you start Tony Pollard this week. This is uh, – I know last week was a good matchup. This week is a great matchup. <clears throat> in general, if you look at the Panthers, they are top three in fantasy – if you just for schedule in the course of the season – they are top three in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks, to wide receivers, and to tight ends. And the reason that they shut those positions down isn't because they're good. It's because they just can be run on so easily. They are 31st against the run. And so this is this can, should be a Tony Pollard game. Here, Here's my counterpoint to that. I think Tony Pollard will be fine in this game. I, and by fine, I mean double digits for the first time in forever. But the Cowboys have something working. They throw the ball on first down. They have elite pass-catching options, and they keep throwing the football. Last week was a really good matchup for Tony Pollard. Mm -hmm. They didn't run the ball that much. No, it, and it was shocking. So, it was shocking to watch them keep throwing the ball, even though they were up. It does make me question this matchup quite a bit. Last week's occurrence, where they just kept throwing on the Giants despite a massive lead, makes me look at this matchup against Carolina and say, hey, maybe they just do that again. Because if they want to do that, it will work. Carolina is not top three against these positions because they're great. Right. Um, so it's just a matter of what are the whatever the Cowboys want to do, they're going to do it well. Adam Thielen's still in your lineup? Yes, for sure. Okay. Even though it's the Dallas Cowboys, good defense. Thielen's been very, very involved. If you're in a PPR league with Frank Reich taking over play calling duties, he is in. That's that's the end, though. It's it's Adam Thielen as a like wide receiver 2-3 option. And then I, I don't want to play with Chuba or definitely not Miles Sanders. Or You don't want to play the Chuba? No. Do you uh, mess around with Brandon Cooks at all? No, I don't think so. I know he had a monster game last week, and so sometimes you just you want to chase those points. But if you look back over the last little while, um, he's had three touchdowns the last four games, good enough starts. But if you just look at the, the actual opportunities he's being given, before this ten week tar uh, this ten target week, he had two targets, four targets, four targets, four targets, four targets on the previous weeks. It's tough though because they you know new team acclimation nine for seventy one seventy three is hard to ignore. Would you play Brandon Cooks or any of the Packers wide receivers? Hmm. I'm I'm gonna I, I I'm would, chasing. I think I would go Dobbs. Dobbs touchdowns. Oh, you mean the things that Cooks has had a bunch of? Dobbs has been a, involved a lot around the the red zone. I mean, it's it's tough. I'm not I'm not excited to start any of those players. I mean, if there's a Tank Dell option out there, I'll take him over all of them. Okay, it, it, Cooks feels a little bit like the Noah Brown situation from last week that no one wanted to chase, but he might be could be he might be valuable. Um, anything else from this game you want to discuss? Uh, Fergie's going to be in your lineup. Ferg Daddy's yeah. been he's been getting it done. Touchdown in three straight games. What a ride it's been with Fergie. He went from like kind of uh, hype to oh maybe he's not the guy to oh he's the guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tennessee's three and six. The Jacksonville Jaguars are six and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Jacksonville minus seven. The over under is forty. Jacksonville had a just a tremendously disgusting performance last week. Four turnovers, three points, uh, absolutely destroyed. You know you you are. You've got Houston on the way in this division. Yeah. They I think they could easily beat Arizona this week and and um rise to six and four. For if sure. Jacksonville lost, they'd be tied. And the Colts. The Colts are not a bad team. Yeah, and so Trevor Lawrence, we talked about it. You can you can just send him off to the waiver wire to to hang out. This has not been the year you wanted from him. He doesn't give you consistent performances. He doesn't throw for a ton of yards. He doesn't use Calvin Ridley very often. We're not going to have Zay Jones back, we don't think. It's hard, too, because we didn't talk about Travis Etienne yesterday. But as I said, I've looked at every single player's soul over the last week of trade offers. Travis Etienne has a a couple of things that I would like to, to look at. He's been one of the best in football. Mm -hmm. Tons of touchdowns. Tons of touchdowns. He also has dominated bad matchups. He's also been pretty bad <laughs> against... Tough matchups. Efficiency-wise, he's been very bad. The last three weeks prior to his down game against San Francisco, 
He was the running back three, the running back four, the running back five. Sounds great. In all three of those matchups, he failed to get to four yards a carry and was pretty much very inefficient. He just got touchdowns. And so, like, Kansas City, he played them. He only scored five fantasy points. Atlanta, he played them. He only scored eight fantasy points. The only matchup he's had that's been difficult, and then San Francisco last week, five fantasy points. The only one he's he's done well against was New Orleans. But this that was a game he had 53 rushing yards. He just scored twice. So, when you look at the back half of his season, you have to play Cincy. you got to play Cleveland. you got to play Baltimore. you got to play Tampa Bay. The, those aren't fun. No. And, and I, so I, I do wonder what his rest of season real – like is it James Conner or ETN? I know that seems crazy. That but seems too that, – that's, that's a bridge too far. Too far. Um, I, I do agree with your point. I think right now the, the first half of the season will absolutely be the pinnacle for Travis ETN. And because he has been so good, he is currently the running back three on the season. If you wanted to look at flipping him in a deal – because you you think well the touchdowns aren't sustainable. I mean he was literally getting two touchdowns every single week. He's not finishing this season with thirty four touchdowns. And so if you want to try to capitalize and sell high and buy low, then I I think he he could be a, a very valuable get you a lot type of piece in a trade offer. Let's talk about the other running back across the field, Derek Henry. Now, Derek Henry this year has done something he just never does, which is he duds. Like, you've got a two-point game against Cleveland. You've got a seven-point game against Indianapolis. That seemed like it would have been a home run. You've got a two-point game against Tampa last week on 43% of snaps. In fact, he's been sub-50% of snaps uh, four times this year. Tajay Spears has really eaten into the snap percentage. That being said, when Henry is on the field, he's usually getting the ball. There are games like two weeks ago where he was sub 50% of snaps, still carried the ball 17 times. Yeah, no no question. It, it does make it an interesting story for the great end-of-season schedule, though, because you know we talked yesterday, Houston, twice. That's always been a smash play for Henry. Houston suddenly giving up a lot of points to quarterbacks. Um, different personnel groupings should be really good for Henry, but you are lowering your odds of a guaranteed performance if you're on the field forty something percent of the time. Yeah, it, it and is. they're they're playing for the future to a degree, right? Like Henry is departing. Yeah. So at what point are they eliminated from playoff contention, and you start focusing on developing your younger players? The way that I look at this schedule for the Titans, we we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but the Jacksonville matchup is not a great one for Henry. I could see it going poorly again, and if you look at Henry's three bad games, two of those three bad games. We're against really, 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 really good run defenses in Tampa Bay and Cleveland. Jacksonville is probably the next best uh, matchup for him to face. And after this week, though, it's the Carolina Panthers. We just talked about how bad they are. Uh, the Colts, the Dolphins, the Texans, the uh, Seahawks, and the Texans again. So after this week, I think bright, bright days ahead for the finish line of Derrick Henry. Uh, what about the finish line for Tajay Spears? All of the all of the things that you said about the schedule. If he's out there fifty percent of the time, isn't that an opportunity for him as well? Yeah, I mean it, it's kind of like what we saw with Jalen Warren last year, where you see a guy who's got a lot of juice and he's going to get more and more opportunities. But he, while he's been on the field, snap wise, he is more of a decoy. Like for instance, two weeks ago when. Henry was on the field sub 50% of snaps and got the ball 17 times. That same game, Tajay Spears was out there 60% of the snaps, five carries. It's just a, it's a different utilization, so I don't think you can start Tajay Spears without a Derrick Henry injury. Hopkins. He's very good. Can the quarterback get him the ball? There's a lot of those situations in the league right now. Garrett Wilson is very good. Can Garrett, the quarterback get him the ball? Yeah, and he can. Zach Wilson has looked okay. He really has. The Two last, touchdowns, I believe. The last several weeks. So here's the problem with Garrett Wilson. Red zone. Man, when they get in the red zone, that team does not. Have they ever gotten in the red zone? Yeah. They they move the ball down the field. No problem. I think I saw a stat where it was like he, what whatever his passing yardage has been, it's like 260 passing yards multiple weeks in a row without a passing touchdown. I don't think that's ever happened before in NFL history. He's He's moving the ball, but. They cannot punch it in. They they do not have a red zone offense. Yeah, I mean that is a huge problem. But uh, Garrett Garrett Wilson's gonna 
Gary Wilson's fine. He, he's a he's a good play. Okay. Not in this matchup. Um, I do think in in this matchup, before we move on, Christian Kirk, uh, keep playing him. He's been very consistent. Tennessee gives up a lot of points to the wide receiver position. Um, Christian Kirk seems like a very, very safe play this week. Are you ever going to get to the point with Ridley where he feels like you want to play him? It's going to take heating up. It's going to take two weeks in a row. Okay. Now. You need uh, some evidence. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. Well, I'll kick it off, quarterback. I'm going with. Hold on. Let me find it. Introducing Jared Goff. Jared Garf. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jared Garf. I forgot. Uh, he's taking on Chicago. Come on. He's at home. Come on. He's he's a monster at home. He's averaging 273 passing yards and 2.4 passing touchdowns at home. He may even have one to go around for Jamison Williams in this game. Uh, Chicago can't stop the pass, and they have been stopping the run. So like, And I think Justin Fields coming back raises the ceiling potential because if Justin Fields can get a little... I agree. You know, I whenever I have an offense in a blowout situation like this, I am begging for that defense to find a way to score two touchdowns. Justin Fields can get two touchdowns. Yeah. There's there's nothing that could be better than a miraculous fumble recovery for a touchdown by the Bears. Like that will just mean Jared Goff goes bananas. Fifty one and sixty one combined points in their two matchups last year. So I'm I'm excited about Jared, Beautiful. Jared Goff. My start of the week at quarterback is Brock Purdy at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Purdy was one of the quarterbacks we highlighted yesterday on the playoff primer. He currently leads the league in passer rating in yards per attempt and expected points per drop back. He's been really, really good and especially been great when Debo was on the field. When he's got the whole supply of weapons, he has been a very good fantasy asset. They are healthy right now, and the wheels are falling off for Tampa Bay. Since week six, they rank 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points to quarterbacks, 28th in expected points per passing attempt with a 26-point Team implied total San Francisco should roll at home as double-digit favorites. I think Brock Purdy is a great play. Looked really good coming out of the bye with all his weapons. Brian Robinson against the New York football Giants is my start of the week at the running back position. He just won't go away. He's Brian Robinson, but he's the RB4 on the year, and we are in week 11. He gets a ton of opportunities. Last week he was the number one pass catcher for this team, which was crazy. And they're heavy favorites. So this is a game where you can kind of – look, the Giants are going to throw in the towel at some point, and Brian Robinson will um, – he'll catch it, and then he will just run, run, run his way to a top 15 performance. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that play. I'm going with James Conner, uh, running back for the Arizona Cardinals, on the road in Houston. He returned from IR this last week. He saw immediately 63% of the snaps, 16 opportunities. And the Cardinals-Texans, now this game is a game I want everything to do with. I, I want just about every player that can be had. They are the highest over-under of the week. Keep in mind, Kansas City plays Philadelphia this week. This is like, could you imagine thinking that, oh, oh it'll be the Cardinals-Texans as the highest over-under, not the, not the Eagles-Chiefs. But the Texans rank 31st in PFF's team tackling grades and they've also allowed the fourth most rushing touch, touchdowns in the NFL. So when they get around the goal line, I think James Conner will get his. Regrettably, I have chosen Brandon Ayuk as my start of the week at the wide receiver position. I say regrettably because I am facing him mm, in league of record was, and know was, what is coming. I was confused. Uh, through week 10, Ayuk is the clear number one in this offense. Uh, we saw some big plays last week back into the end zone. The recipe is quite clear in San Francisco. You give the ball to Debo and you give the ball to Christian McCaffrey and then you play action and throw it about 30 yards down the field to Ayuk and then you just do it over and over again and you win by a bunch of points. Tampa Bay, you mentioned it, right now they're awful. They're giving up a pile of these deep throws. You know, 39 completions of 20-plus yards, which is the Brandon Ayuk zone. That's the fourth most in the NFL. Ayuk is unfortunately for me, but very fortunately for you if you have him, set up for success this week. All right. I've mentioned this player a couple times on today's episode already, and we'll talk about him on the matchup tomorrow. But Tank Dell is my wide receiver start of the week at home against Arizona. I think he is the alpha among the Texans' 
pass catchers. Nico Collins is just now coming back off of injury. Robert Woods, Noel Brown dealing with their own. If you actually take out week one, this is a little cherry picky, but it makes sense. You take out week one, which was his first career game. And he played limited snaps. He wasn't a full-time player. And you take out the, con the concussion game in week five where he had 36% of snaps. He is averaging 15.6 fantasy points per game. 8.3 targets, 77 receiving yards per game. For a rookie, that per game average would be top five since 2014 behind only Odell Beckham, Justin Jefferson, Puka, and Jamar Chase. He earns targets, and the Cardinals are good at giving them up. They're like, hey, we're going to make it easy for you to get a target. 37% uh, of opponent pass attempts result in a first down. That's 31st in the NFL. Uh, there's a reason this game is the highest over-under. I went and looked at my best ball, like uh, underdog best ball mania d situations. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't have. I mean, you have a billion. Not the best ball mania, but okay. I've got a billion. I've, I've got one lineup in best ball mania. But I, I do have a first place best ball mania Ooh, team. Ooh, very nice. So, which is great. But you I got Tank I, Dell? Well, no, I have CJ Stroud, though. Ah. And I went and looked at that, and I was like, oh, man. Like, who would have thought, like, drafting this rookie late would have paid off as much as it had? Um, but he has gotten it done. My tight end start of the week, I'm going back to him. Dalton Kincaid against the Jets. He's been on fire. Uh, he is heavily involved in the offense. He's involved down the field. He's been the tight end three in the last four games uh, since the departure of Dawson Knox, which we saw this coming, or at least saw the potential of it. But to see it executed with a rookie, you love to see it. Say, uh, you know, Savon Diggs had his worst game of the year last year, and, you know, the panic in the streets of Buffalo. I don't know how much of that was related to the fact that he was very limited in practice and had the back injury. Maybe that's just coincidence. I don't know how angry he was he didn't get more targets. But right now, Dalton Kincaid is a fundamentally sound part of this offense, and that's what you love to see. And it's hard. You know, if you go away from the top in tight ends to find a start of the week, this is the, the one that you're looking at where the Jets are a really good defense, but I think Kincaid will get it done. Yeah, and I've got Sam Laporta. Uh, stacking up with your quarterback at home. That is the rookie tight end for the Detroit Lions. The Lions have the second highest team implied total of the week. Laporta at home is averaging 15.3 fantasy points per game. Eight targets, six for 63 and one on average. And the Bears are bad against tight end. They rank 25th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to tight ends. Sam Laporta should be a great play this week. All right. Thanks again to our sponsor, Purina. Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom boom kicker of the week. Last week on Boom Boom Kicker, I roundhouse farted the number one kicker of the week, and he dropped dead in prison. <clears throat> He's a really dark. Escaped from Alcatraz. I vanished with a little pizzazz as I set course for Shanghai. I commandeered a cockpit. This was rude, I do admit. But the ultimate cannonball for the commander's Joey Sly. See, I pushed him out. No, I sure of the plane, and mm. so I hope mm. he cannonballed. That's how I want to hit the ground if I ever have well, to least, jump out of a plane without a shoot. We left some mystery as to his demise, like whether he's he could have survived it. I mean, cannonball is probably the safest method. Okay, so good, so Joey Slot. Good luck, Joey. Last year was uh, or last week was Jason Jason Myers. Was that right? Yes, it was. Okay, I think he he did all right, didn't he? He was the number one. All right. Uh, we are, how are you feeling? It was, was this episode cathartic? Are you feeling more forgiveness? I think, heart? I think what I, forgiveness is not the word <laughs> that'll come in time. I mean, the choice I, I brought it up this morning, it's, it's spending my life in prison for murder or forgiveness. And I will choose forgiveness in that situation, but I just want people to understand that they cut me out of the offer I made. They cut me right out. That's all. In fairness, they did say that you came up with a great offer. It is and patronizing you... and uh, makes it worse. Yeah, makes it I way know. worse. Oh, Josh was you know, digging was, his own grave yesterday a, when he was talking It was a friendship betrayal. It really was because 
it made it you know it's like the show survivor where you think you're friends with people and you're not mm-hmm. oh they yeah. talked to me for an hour like yeah. i they talked to me for an hour like a friend uh-huh. and then instead of ever being a friend at the end of it they just said we're gonna cut you out and do this in secret I, it was a friendship thing. It's not. I, I want you. It's going to gonna last a long time. Yes. Yes. Andy. It's going to last a really. Yes. It's going to last a really long remember time. Remember this when trying to make deals with them. Remember. I will. What scoundrels? No, are. I will. Don't even make deals with them. At least one. Hold of them. on At to your hatred. At least one of them, I probably will hold. I will probably hold it against Josh in all leagues I play with him for a really long time. Two seasons. Uh, two, multiple leagues. Yeah. No. 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 But multiple leagues. Two seasons? Now, see, the, the problem is, is I now think you are self-seeking because yeah. you do not want me to get deals done. <sighs> I overplayed my hand. <laughs> yes, yes. Ballersdiscord.com. Go check out the conversation over there. The Foot Clan hanging out, chatting. Tomorrow we got matchups, fantasy face-off. We'll see if I'm one day closer to forgiveness. Also, we should let people know, isn't there like, what, what, there is like a some absurd thing you chose to do? Yes, there is an absurd thing I chose to do. If you go to uh, DFSPass.com, if you're interested in, in using the DFS Pass, we're about halfway through the season. The, the DFS Pass is normally 50 bucks. There is a coupon right now you can use that lets you have it for the rest of the season plus the playoffs for under 17 bucks. And so that's just try DFS 23 That's the code? Yeah. Like, that's the code. code. Try the co- DFS 23 Yeah, so if you want to try it, it's good for a week. DFSPass.com. Use the code TRYDFS23. Thank you for reminding me about that. We sent an email out with that yesterday. We want people to get in there. It's really been a good experience. We've got a new lineup optimizer and a bunch of a lot of success from players this year. We have never received as many messages over any product ever. This year, the tweets and the comments saying, like, yeah, thank, people are thank enjoying you for it. your picks. Thank you for your plays. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, the whole mantra behind that product for, since the beginning was DFS for the rest of us. Like the the DFS products out there are like hundred dollars a month at minimum for like a bunch of other major sites, and we or seventeen dollars for the year or seventeen for the year. <laughs> so so we want people in there and playing and having fun and enjoying it and having success, and then not like spending a bunch of money and then not having success, and then you're just out more money. So uh, it's it's for the for the fun yeah. of the game, and so that's DFSPass dot com. One week only. Code is try DFS twenty three. That'll do it for today's show. You can check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell, and you'll catch Jason Moore live on Sunday. Talk to you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.